Hey, it's Tony Bruski along with Jenny and Carol Hughes inviting you to come check out our brand new podcast, Office Horror Stories. You don't get a fart in my presence and just leave it. When I pick up a cup, I try to take a sip. It's Greg's chew. I'm like, <laughs> spit take right That's into the so screen. Gross. I know. You can't unhear that. One. It's a show jam packed with stories of crazy bosses, insane co-workers, and workplaces from hell. I'm seriously getting in trouble right now for being a hard worker. Pick your ear, nose, rub your eye. That clearly probably is pink eye. Here, let me handle those apples for you. So not only is it gross that you're getting bacteria onto the money, but you're getting bacteria up into... (laughs) something else. And the best part, you're invited to share your workplace nightmare or office horror story as well. Just search Office Horror Stories wherever you download podcasts, click subscribe, and start binging away now. You know, I'm single, and then I listen to stories like that, and I'm like, that person found someone? (laughs) What? You've been carrying on a not-so-discreet affair with one of the day shift supervisors, and it skipped town with her and literally thousands of dollars of client money that have been earmarked for employee incentives. I wish I had a kid. Because if I had a kid, I could call in sick a lot. I could leave early a lot. And not saying you know that they were making it up. But yes, I have worked with people who made that shit. Our brand new podcast, Office Horror Stories. New episodes weekly, available wherever you download podcasts. Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, what lurks in the dark corners of a home at night? Is it just a lack of light or is there something else? Something much more disturbing that lives in these dark crevices. We'll find out today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855 855- 853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Then it is 855-853-4802 our phone number to call into Real Ghost Stories Online. Share your Real Ghost Story with us. Write it on the website realghoststoriesonline.com and if you love the show keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person, an EPP. You sign up to do that at ghostpodcast.com or through Patreon, patreon.com slash real ghost stories to uh, become a supporter of us there. It's only $5 a month. And with that, you get access to all of our bonus material. It's a brand new EPP bonus episode every single week. You get advanced episodes of the show commercial free, weeks before they're released to the public, advanced ticket sales, everything. It's it's great. It's a wonderful thing for you, the pets, the family, the uh, relatives that you no longer speak to. Everyone will thank you. They'll come out of the woodwork. Maybe they won't. But uh, do check it out. Ghostpodcast.com or Patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories. uh, And uh, keep us on the air. Uh, Tony and Carol Hughes joining you once again. And I actually do believe, Carol... This, uh, as it airs, unless you're an EPP and you're listening to this in advance, uh, this is the first episode of 2020. Uh, what? It's already next year? So I do have to say, because I've always wanted to say it, this is 2020. <laughs> and now for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to be Hugh Downs and you're going to be Barbara Walters. So here we go. Okay, you start. I don't even, I don't remember how Hugh Downs, he, tonight on 2020... Uh, wh- who? Well, Tony, I I need to say things with Oz because Barbara Walters doesn't say Oz very well. Our investigative reporter tonight, what the hell is his name with the mustache? I think he's on Fox News. Geraldo Rivera. No, not Geraldo. Uh, who is the guy who investigated he was on everything? There once upon a time. Ah, fuck, I can't think of his name. I used to like him too. And then he went to Fox News. And then it was oh, like, yeah, John Stossel. John Stossel. Yeah. He was, I used to enjoy watching John Stossel. Why is it that they do this? I went to a car lot and they totally fucked me over. Who knew that car lots fucked people over? Well, <laughs> it was shit John, like that. they all do. But Barbara, I can't remember how Barbara Walters talks, <laughs> other than she has that weird speech, like, oh. Yeah. I think he did pretty like, good. Willie. Willie. Yeah. Well, I and think, I always uh, thought 
like, I think she's great at her job. Don't get me wrong. But I always was like, how did she get that job? She can't say who Oz. There's so many reporters, like, uh, also, um, uh, Tom Brokaw. I said, no, I, I, NBC, I use where I'm going to not say a lot of enunciations and it's going yeah, to be very that's funny you say that because I, I just listened to a podcast about the Clinton impeachment mm -hmm. and so they went like did several clips with Tom Brokaw yeah. and I thought several times I was like he's drunk oh no that's just the way he talks <laughs> I mean today no I he really is drunk no, that's just nobody funny. and I love Tom Brokaw but I, I don't think today there would ever be a reporter that had that kind of a speech impediment that would ever make it up the ranks with any sort of weird, you know, and I don't even, it's not really a speech impediment, but just of any sort of odd way of speaking that would, would cut it. Uh, there's nobody young or anything that, that it's like just clear as day. Nobody has like that identifiable uh, delivery. And maybe that's what really made them stand out and made them super unique uh, in their, their time. And that's why we still remember them today. But uh, you you just don't you don't have that anymore. We need more people. He was that, brilliant, uh, though. He, yeah. I mean, he's a really smart guy, yeah. and but yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I uh, I like that he still does commentary and stuff mm -hmm. um, on uh, election night and things. It's always it's like oh, let's bring out the wise old man who can give us some perspective on things. I know, and then he comes out, and you're like, oh, I yeah. love him. <laughs> I know. You're I like, want him to be my grandfather. I like uh, him, and I also like watching Dan Rather's commentary. I follow him on uh, social media, and it's like, oh, look, someone sane <laughs> who can give us educated <laughs> looks at history. A voice of reason. Balance. Yeah, I know. It's uh, I, I miss that. Um, we should, there's so much just come like a uh, like, and now like an old person news network, and it's just the old anchors that are still alive, and that's all they are. They just give like how do they bring back sitcoms? Let's bring back a news network that's just old anchors. <laughs> that's all it is. We'll even bring back Peter Jennings from the grave. It'll be great. You'll see. <laughs> Well, they could just replay old newscasts and we'd all feel better about we'll ourselves. Just, just take out all the crap parts. We'll just take all the <laughs> good, happy stories. Just grab Peter Jennings' voice and his words, and then we'll splice them together to to report on news stories. You know they can do that. Like, this will be exciting. 855-853-4802 uh, is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online or right on the website, realghoststoriesonline.com. Welcome to 2020. And uh, here we go. This is our first one of the year. And it starts out, I'm not sure whether this could be considered a ghost story or not. I have bad insomnia. I don't sleep some days or sleep between two to three hours a day. When I do sleep, I usually have some reoccurring dreams that I've had since childhood. When I do have this dream, it puts me back in my childhood house that belonged to my grandmother. My family lived with my grandparents when I was eight or nine, now 29. We slept on the ground floor in their house and my grandparents slept in the upstairs room. Every few days, we'd have to go up the stairs to the second floor to help my grandparents with cleaning and getting their dogs to go outside. I'd always have bad feelings around the stairs and would always get the creeps every time I got near them. Unfortunately, when I was told to do something by my parents, I would do it so that I didn't get yelled at. Getting to the bottom of the stairs would always be a fear for me, so I'd run up them. I started having dreams around a year or so later that when I would get to the bottom of the stairs, I would feel an immense fear and run up them. When I'd turn around at the top, I'd see a figure darker than the shadows around it lurking in the corner of the ceiling at the bottom of the stairs. The dream would change from time to time. It would sometimes be at the top of the stairs, kind of hunched over looking directly at me, while others who would be right behind me as I make it to the top of the stairs in the dream. I could never identify what it was or what it wanted and still can't do it to this day almost 20 years later. I still have the dream and it still appears. I had made a visit to my parents recently to spend some time with them and my two younger sisters. I was in the kitchen telling my mom about this dream randomly that I've been having since being a kid and looking at my grandmother's house. She thought it was just a nightmare that I'd been having not having much else to say, both my sisters said that they had dreams like that when they were younger in the same house. I don't know what to make of it. My mother and her side of the family is super religious, while my father and his family aren't at all. So we got both sides of the spectrum 
growing up. I've tried looking things up to no avail and recently found this podcast, so I thought I'd share my story with you. I work a graveyard shift where I work and listen to this podcast every night. I'll be an EPP soon. This must convince my wife. Keep up the amazing work. So there we have a, a story where it's it's a dream, but siblings are having it as well. So it's not an isolated thing. Is there something else going on there that that made the impact on the house, or that the, the, uh, the house made an impact on them? This family, these 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 now people who are adults, but as children, that are, it, it's such a similar impact on all of them. Yes, because remember, I've shared in the past about the haunted house that we lived in, no, about how I still, my cat is playing with toys behind me, if you hear that. But when I, I would have these dreams about that house, and everyone else in my family does too. Are the dreams? So I think that's pretty common. And it's just, there's a different feeling about those mm -hmm. dreams. They're not like a regular dream. It's, in fact, I had one last night. I was in that house, and I haven't had one forever. And it's just this different feeling about him. Your siblings, uh, did they, did they, when they dream about it, have you ever had the situation where it's it's the same dream or or something very, very close to being the same dream? Sim which very you similar. But yeah. you know what's funny is that, I, I don't know when the episode ran for sure, but last mm -hmm. week when I talked to my nephew, yeah, we talked to my nephew, and he was talking about living in the apartment he lives in, and he saw that figure he calls Chelsea. And Sophia, his sister, the night before he saw that, she had a dream that she was in his apartment and saw this black, shadowy figure of a woman. Then when Giovanni saw it and he told her what happened, she's like, oh, my God, I had that dream last night. So that's kind of similar to that story. It is. It, it's, and, it's, and Sophia had never seen that in the house before. So it wasn't like she had that feeling, but she had the dream. So I told her sometime that we'll have her on too, because she's got some, a few stories. But I thought that was really interesting because her and her brother are really close. Yeah, that is really interesting. And it, it, it ties together really well with the, this, this dream story where dreams, mm -hmm. you know, they can go much deeper than just being, oh, that was an odd experience or an odd thing in my imagination where there really is some more depth to what what occurred. And if you guys are just tuning in right now here in the new year uh, and you're wondering uh, what episode we're talking about uh, with uh, uh, with the we were talking to your your nephew, nephew. yeah the other week uh, that's that's an actually last uh, well about two three weeks ago uh, in terms of the chronological timeline uh, with Carol uh, so just listen back a handful of episodes you can hear that uh, that whole interview uh, where you're actually live at the haunted house or the haunted apartment which actually took all the nerve I had <laughs> to do that I am just telling you what. Because I wanted to do it on Saturday night when there'd be people in the building, yeah. but Tony couldn't do it. We had to do it on Sunday when just Giovanni and I were in the building. And I was kind of, I get this weird feeling when I sense something around me, my heart starts racing and, and I get, and it's weird. It's like, I can be totally fine. Everything's fine. And then my heart starts racing and it's like, it's here. I know there's something here. So we're in the middle of that podcast and my heart just started racing. And I'm like, don't look up. Don't look up. Don't look in that room. Don't look. Did you? I did. And <laughs> I mean, like real quick, because whenever you've got something saying, don't, 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 you kind of do. And I saw this. All I saw was, but it was really fast, but it looked like kind of a smoke, like a white smoke mm -hmm. kind of. And I looked away really fast. So it could have just been my eyes messing with me. It was only your eyes. It's all it was. Just keep telling yeah. yourself. Yeah, I don't know. But I was like, I didn't look at it long enough because I'm like, I don't want to know. When you have something but, like that and it's like, don't look at it, don't look at it, don't look at it. And you look at it for a second. You see the white smoke. If you were to sit there and stare at it and give it attention, would would that influence it in some way? Would that have an effect of like in a movie where all of a sudden the mist then kind of forms into something because the attention is given or is it, does it, uh, does that have no bearing on it whatsoever? And Tony, I'll never find out because next time, I think find you don't out. Enough that when that happens, I don't want to see it. Wouldn't that I have don't. been amazing if lie during the show, just as we're doing it, uh, 
boom, an apparition appeared. At, that would have been awesome on, on tape. Uh, our podcast would have been posted to every damn place in the world had that happened. So now you're telling me I let you down. <laughs> I think next time you bring out the Ouija board, light some candles, <laughs> seance, a couple of pentagrams on the wall maybe, and see what sort of shit. Ha- no, I'm kidding. Don't ever do that. Well, the but, crazy uh, thing is like my nephew, I kept saying, turn some damn lights in here. He goes, well, I, all my light bulbs are burned out. I said, go, go get some damn light bulbs, kid. So in that whole building, like there's one light on. Oh, wow. And it's a big building. It's really big. And so we're the only people in it with one light on in the <laughs> dining room. Talking ghost so, stories. Oh, I'm like, God. It, was, it took all the nerve I had. I almost talked myself out of it and did it at my sister's house. But I didn't. I went there and I did it. So I hope you're really proud of me. It was good. It was a good episode. I was, was proud of me. Yeah, I am proud of you. I don't know, though, how my nephew lives there by himself. I don't know. He sounded like he kind of had some peace with it right now. So hmm. he's around it more frequently. Maybe, you know, it's just kind of uh, there's a comfort level that happens once. I don't know about the whole time because I'm Aunt Carol. I'm like, I'd be, like we'd leave and I'd go, you sure you're going to be OK here? Yeah, I'm fine, Carol. You sure you're going to be OK? <laughs> Do you want to come spend the night at your parents' house? I'm fine, Carol. <laughs> like if anybody's freaking him out, it's me. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. That was a good episode. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost story with us. Let's jump over to our next letter. It says, so this happened a while back, about six years ago when I was still in college. I used to live in a small apartment with a roommate and his friend who crushed or crashed on the couch until he could find some place for him to stay. The activity, or so to speak, started happening around two months after I had moved in. I'd come home to find my stuff in places I'm sure I didn't leave them in, like my iPhone cases, which I usually have on my desk, would be lying on the ground. And yes, I'm the sort of person that has like 10 cases for one phone. I don't know, guess I was really into collecting cases, and I still do to this day. Anyway, I didn't really think much of it at the time, because I just thought maybe one of my roommates had got into my room. This kept happening for like a week and then suddenly stopped when I had my first sleep paralysis experience and saw the thing, whatever it was. I was woken up by this very strange feeling of dread in the middle of the night to see this thing crouch down on the ground beside my bed just watching me. I tried to move, but it felt as if my whole body had shut down and I couldn't even speak. While this dark, ominous creature just sat there and looked at me for what seemed like an eternity, until it got up and walked to the corner of the room where it sort of faded away. It had long, skinny arms and legs and a featureless face without even eyes. I woke up momentarily afterwards in a pool of sweat and tried to process what had just happened. I looked over to the dark corner of my room where that thing had disappeared to, but I couldn't see it or sense it anymore. I didn't go back to sleep that day, just tried to stay away until morning and decided to brush the whole incident off as some sort of weird, creepy, super-realistic dream. The next day, the same thing happened, almost at the same time, about five in the morning. I tried biting my lip to make myself wake from this nightmare, but to no avail. The strange being just sat there looking at me, even though it had no eyes. I know it was looking at me. And, as I expected, it got up after a while and went to the dark corner where it disappeared into the wall for lack of a better explanation. This happened almost every day for two weeks, and as weirdly as the whole thing started, it suddenly stopped. Even though I see shadows moving about the corner of my eye after the incident had long stopped. The dark entity never once showed up at night ever again, and I'm honestly glad it didn't, because I didn't think I could ever take another week of that. I was never much of a believer in the paranormal or the sort of thing, and still on the fence and i'm sure this has a perfectly rational explanation as crazy as this encounter might sound but i can surely say i'm more open-minded i really don't think this was sleep paralysis although it might seem like it the feeling of dread and fear when this thing showed up was real and not something my mind could possibly make up and i honestly don't know what it all meant anyways thanks for letting me share I wanted to write in sooner, but I guess better late than never. Love the podcast. I listen to it every day. Love the work you guys put into it. And hopefully you all can have some insight for me on this whole encounter. So here we go. Kind of another semi-dream time-like experience. 
See, but I do think there are times when you do have the sleep paralysis because I mm-hmm. have had that yeah. where something really bad was happening. And I'm like, I just have to wake up if I can just open my eyes and then I'll, I'll be thinking, no, I am awake. No, you're not. It's this weird in between. You're kind of a you think you're awake, but then you're not really awake. Yeah. I don't even know how to explain that. It's it, but I think that I think there's more to it because the same thing happened and it could have been in that weird dream state where he's seeing it, but it just makes me think there's something else going on that he was experiencing in that kind of a dream state. Well, it, it kind of makes you wonder if a visitation sort of thing. Yeah. And when you're in that state, it, it, it kind of makes you wonder is it, are you, are you, is this just your mind that's, that's projecting these things out there and you're experiencing it? Or are you tapping into something? Are you tapping into another state of reality or dimension or plane, whatever you want to call it? And you're seeing these things because of where you're at um, with, with, with the state that your mind is in. Uh, and it, I don't think we really have an answer to it, but it's an interesting I thing. That to anybody that's had dreams like that, they're so different from a regular dream and they're terrifying. Yeah. And all you want to do is wake up and then you think you w- woke up, but you really didn't wake up. But you're in your room. Like I've had them. I'm in my room. I'm like in my bed, but it's happening. And then, and like, I'm like, okay, if I just open my eyes, if I just wake up, this will go away. And I can't. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. But to me, that just, especially that it happened at the same time each night. And it sounds like it woke him up. Yeah. It and may- he's laying there. It kind of sounds like he saw it after he had woken himself up. That's what it sounds like. It makes it much more suspicious as to it having a lot more depth to it than just a sleep paralysis experience. But hallelujah that he hasn't seen it again. Yeah. No so maybe like before you go to bed, it's the Hallmark Channel or <laughs> stuff like that. Watch a nice Lori Laughlin movie before you go to bed. And think about her going to prison. Oh, yeah. damn. That's a bad idea. <laughs> I saw a... Uh, I, a I should not make fun of her. Heaven forbid. Yeah, I saw... <laughs> you a, just never know yeah. when you screw up in this world. And I, it catches up with you. No kidding. I saw a great um, uh, cartoon that someone had posted on our Facebook page the other day. And it was uh, it was three boxes. The first two boxes were people, all people going to sleep. One's like, I listen to relaxing sounds of nature. The next one is, I listen to my white noise canceling headphones. And then the next one is this, this woman laying in bed, totally peaceful. And then the sound coming out of her phone and the bubble says, and she stabbed her husband five times in the back. <laughs> And it's just like sleeping like a baby and not having to use the white noise or all this. It's and and that's true. I mean, I think that's so much so many of us that listen to the show that, that I mean, hell, I, I wish I could do that. But I, I listen to the news, which is scary enough. But um, Jen does not want any sort of, uh, you know, uh, any sort of dark podcasts or I used to listen to Art Bell back in the day. Uh, when, when he was on and I, I'm not allowed to do that every once in a while, if it's like a, uh, if it's a case where like usually typically in winter, if one of us is coughing really bad, we have a cold or something and it's just, okay, I'm going to go sleep in that room. You sleep in this room and we'll get a good night's sleep. Those nights I will turn on an old episode of, of art bell and, and ghost stories. And it's like, Oh, I sleep so well to that. And I don't well, know then why. There's nights where you're going. <coughs> yeah. I sure do have a cough. I'm sick, honey. And all you really want to do is go listen to Art Bell. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm sorry, honey. I'd rather listen to the, the Amityville horror story than sleep next to you tonight. I, I don't think that would go over very well. I should probably never say that out loud. <laughs> then it, Just uh, kidding. Leads to great, uh, great nightmares. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to a caller. Hi. Ah, Hang on one second. I got to open it up over here because it's not going to play in that player. Let's try this. Let's hear a ghost story. Play. It's asking for... Here we go. Hello, Tony, Jenny, um, Carol, and or Sean, um, whoever happens to be hosting today. Um, 
My name is SB. I am recording this from the Twin Cities area of Minnesota. Um, originally, I am from um, a very, very rural area in another um, Midwestern state. I um, am calling about a, um, a situation that happened to me very recently, um, as in within the last week. Um, I guess I will start with the fact that I have, um, I guess, kind of recently come to terms with the fact that I have um, some, I guess, sensitivity. I wouldn't call it psychic ability. I'm not a medium or anything like that, but I do have a sensitivity. I am definitely, um, I guess, an empath. Um, and it was just just very recently that I have um, really begun to, I don't know, come to terms with it or um, become more open to the fact that this is just, I guess, part of who I am. Um, and um, I don't know, call it a gift or call it a curse. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure yet because I haven't had that much experience with it. Um, I do think that it is, um, I guess, possible that um, this ability was either enhanced by or opened up by a near-death experience that I had um, a couple of years ago. Um, and... At that point, I still wasn't necessarily um, a believer in in terms of of the fact that I might have some kind of ability. Um, my attitude towards the paranormal is, for the most part, um, I I guess I have a healthy respect. For the paranormal, I've always kind of uh, felt like, um, I've always felt like, yeah, I believe in it. <laughs> I know, I know that there are ghosts. I know that these things exist. And, um, you know, if you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. I just, you know, um, that was kind of my my attitude towards it was I just I didn't want to experience I didn't want to experience things so um I just kind of kept it at that like yeah so anyway on with um my recent experience um um just just about a week ago um not not even not even a week um there was a day where i was just kind of feeling a little bit off um kind of just feeling strange emotionally um and it didn't seem to have anything to do with what um was going on in my life at the time um and on that same day, my mom um, called me um, to tell me that my aunt had uh, passed away and that she had had a massive heart attack. Um, and we weren't on the phone all that long because she had other people she had to call and other arrangements she was making and, and all of that. Um, However, uh, there were two pretty weird things about this experience for me. Um, firstly, I think um, after that, after that call, and for pretty much the rest of the next day, I I felt like I was suffering from some kind of empathic overload um 
it was as if I was feeling an entire very large extended family's worth of um, just grief um, shock anger this was very this was very sudden um, and unexpected uh, she was not all that old um, especially considering the women in my family tend to live into their 90s um, usually my, my grandmother passed away almost a year ago and she was 99 um, on with the story I was feeling a lot of just 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 so much um, and and I, I don't feel like it was all my own. In fact, I'm, I'm sure it was not all my own. Um, I was not extremely. I was not. I, I have. I've never been really, um, really close to my extended family for the most part. Um, I have nothing but fond memories of my aunt. It's just that we weren't. Um, I guess so close that that I should have been breaking down the way that I was. Uh, and so, yes, I, I came to the, the realization that this was not just my feelings that I was feeling at the time. Um, and so the other weird thing about what just happened was that um, after my mom had told me what had happened, I somehow just got this clear picture in my mind of um, my aunt standing in her kitchen by the, the stove and just just collapsing um, onto the kitchen floor. And, and my mom had not had time to tell me any of that. Um, however, after I, I had that, that vision, um, I called my mom and didn't didn't tell her anything about what I um, had suspected because my mom is not not really open to the paranormal. Um, so I didn't tell her anything, but I did ask, you know, uh, where where was it when when she when she died. When, when was it? Where was it? Who was there? Um, all of those questions. And um, so my mom explained to me that she had been sitting in the living room um, talking to a couple of people, um, neighbors or something, and got up and walked into the kitchen um, to do something at the stove and um, collapsed and died right there. Um, in the kitchen and this just I don't know it I, I, I don't know if this is a, a coincidence um, like I'm, I'm just imagining this um, part of me is telling me it's just yeah it's, it's just a coincidence and my overactive imagination is in overdrive again um but you know this is this is all this this empathic ability and whatever else is going on is all so new to me that i am just confused as all get out and i'm i'm really wondering um what you guys take on this is um so, um, hopefully I will hear this on the show sometime soon. I am an EPP, and I have been since, I think, day three of listening to your podcast, which was about two months ago. And um, I love you guys. I love your show. Um, I will be calling in with some other experiences at a later time. This was just uh, something that I kind of felt like I needed to do now um so again love you guys love your show hope I hear this and I would really like to get your take on it thanks guys bye what are your thoughts I think that's so legit I think that absolutely happened to her I do not think that's 
she's crazy. No. I do not think she's delusional. I think that she had one of those. Vi- I don't know if it's like a visit to how you know where when someone dies. I don't know how mm-hmm. that exactly happens. But I totally believe that happened to her. It's like touched by an angel on CBS Sunday nights. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Or not. A wee bit different, I but I do believe, I totally believe that can happen. Yeah. Now, like she said, you know, is it a blessing or a curse? I don't know. I think in a way it's a bit of a blessing. You know, I, I think that's kind of cool and I would love to have more of that ability, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I legit think that happened to her. Now, how you harness that or expand on that, I have no idea. And I think that there'll be times things just happen to her, you know, and you can wish that you would know something and then you never know. Mm -hmm. But other things just come to you. And so she might not have a lot of control over what comes in. I don't know. Maybe she will. But I definitely 100% think that happened to her. I I can imagine that. If you have this ability, you know, without you want it or not, it's just there. It can be very draining uh, if suddenly it's like you're, you're just feeling all these emotions and things kind of come to you and you have no control or reason for why it's there. You didn't do something. You didn't subject yourself to a certain situation where you know it's going to drain you. It just comes to you. I could see that being kind of frustrating. You know, I, I, I get drained in social situations or when I'm uncomfortable, it is draining as heck to me. Um, I was talking to Jen about that the other day because we're now in a, a place where there's a lot of folks our age and there's a lot of social things to get involved in. And I'd like to, but I said, you know, I find it just draining. Uh, and it's just, it's how I am. I, I've always been drained getting out into social situations. It mentally, emotionally drains me. I, I'm fine when I'm I'm in situations with people I'm comfortable with and I know I can do that without any sort of problem. It, it's when I don't know somebody and I don't know what to expect that it's draining. Like when I do interviews on the Grave Talks, if it's a guest that I know or I've, I've, I've heard at least before and I have some comfort level there, I'm good. But when it's somebody I've never talked to, I don't know what I'm going to expect. By the time that hour is done, I want to take a nap just because it's just like, ah, I, it, it's something about my personality or how my mind works. But, um, it, you know, if you're just getting those those experiences and you're feeling that those emotions and feelings that you're not expecting, that could take a lot out of you, um, whether you want it or not. So I get to see why it's a blessing and a curse at the same point, depending on what's coming to you at, at any given time. Yeah. So thank you for uh, for sharing that uh, that experience. I love stories us. like that one. I do, too. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs> And this edition of 2020. For more 2020, visit abc.com. Uh, and if you want to uh, listen to more of our episodes, please uh, go become an extra podcast person at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Barbara Walters, I'm Hugh Downs. Thanks for watching 2020. <laughs> and I'm John Stossel. Talk about I'm me. Barbara Walters. Damn it. <laughs>